Where God's love fills the heart, there is harmony. Gone are all the pains of sin. For Jesus' love heals them. To be completely lost in Him. Nothing more I desire than to dive even deeper into this great sea of love. Where Jesus' love fills the heart, one's own love seethes. For where selfishness still reigns, the cause of love stands still. But if we are completely devoted to Him, then His love flows within us and makes us ever clearer, purer, until the image of the Lamb shines forth from us. Where God's love fills the heart, peace and joy come in. There are no more harsh words, because Jesus' love makes us small. He wants to transfigure Himself completely in us, 
until our image completely resembles his. Oh, what a marvelous goal! The crown beckons us. When we reach it through Jesus' love, oh, blessed eternal love of God, which is revealed in Jesus, and which, oh, what a miracle of grace was also poured out in me. Oh, Jesus, let the fire of your ardor of love burn even brighter. So that everyone may recognize that it is your spirit that rests upon us. Dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, for today's special devotion with Brother Frank, we greet all of you who have come, and also all those who are joining us online worldwide, in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise and thanks be to the Lord that we can still gather together undisturbed in the name of Jesus. We have come to experience the Lord anew and to look for His soon coming. May the Lord grant grace and take us all to Himself at His glorious second coming. The Lord's table is still richly set. We cannot thank the Lord enough that today we are once again able to hear a sermon inspired by the Spirit from a cold mouth. On this Easter Sunday, we would like to remember with great gratitude the greatest event, the redemption that was accomplished 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary. As an opening word, I would now like to read the whole chapter from Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53, the whole chapter. Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed.
All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with a great, and he shall divide the spoil with a strong, because he has poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. According to his promise, Jesus conquered death, hell, and the grave. He has obtained a unique, eternal redemption after spirit, soul, and body. He has also made us alive through the Spirit. We can read this in Romans 8.11. Romans 8, I read verse 11. But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. Up to here, this precious and holy word, may the Lord give us all this quickening power by His grace. Let us stand up and pray. Faithful Heavenly Father, with all our hearts, we thank you for your precious and holy word. On this Easter Sunday, we do not want to forget the good things you have done for us. You have forgiven all our sins and healed all our infirmities. You have redeemed our lives from perdition 
and crowned us with mercy and loving kindness. Thank you that you came to this earth to destroy the works of the devil. Thank you that we may be pardoned sinners and that we have been yours since the foundation of the world. Almighty God, our resurrection has also come near. Grant us all this quickening resurrection power. O oh God, we rejoice and thank you that you have provided a resurrection body for us and that we may spend eternity with you and with one another. Lord, bless us today in a special way. Bless your faithful servant in particular and give him a double measure of strength and grace in his old age and bless his lips when he speaks to us afterwards. Let us all look only to you, for you are the author and finisher of our faith. Let your Holy Spirit come upon us all today is the prayer of us all. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, I also greet you very warmly from Zurich. And we also thank you for all the blessings that have been sent to Zurich and the congregation. And we are very grateful for our brothers, for the ministering brethren, Brother Baumgartner, Brother Scherer, and Brother Keller. In the opening word, we have already heard the core of what needs to be considered today. It is about the finished work of redemption on the cross of Calvary. It is about the fact that our Lord and Savior came to us became man and took all our iniquity and sin, everything upon himself. And just as it is written, the punishment for all we have done was laid on him that we might have peace and by his stripes we have been healed. Isaiah 53 is the most precious chapter in the whole Bible. And we thank the Lord that it is not only written but that it became a divine reality on the cross of Calvary. Yes, brothers and sisters, there is only one thing left for us to do, to give thanks and to believe everything that has been given to us, forgiveness, reconciliation, grace, and salvation, everything that has been given to us in our Savior, and to experience 
that the Lord really did what He did on the cross for us, that it happened for you and for me, that you were there, that I was there, because thus it is written, He took upon Himself the iniquity and sin of all of us. But now comes the point, which is right at the beginning of Isaiah 53. Who has believed our preaching? This is what matters. Not just to read out, not just to preach about it, but the big question, who have you, have you, have we, in all peoples and tongues, who believe the divine message before the return of Jesus Christ, Have we received and accepted it with all our hearts? Have we fully believed the preaching of what happened on Calvary? And accepted its application in our lives by grace? Yes, we are grateful to the Lord. Today we will briefly look at the way of our Savior as He went via Gethsemane to Golgotha and He cried out in Gethsemane, Not my will, but yours be done. And he went, taking all the humiliation, all the contempt, everything upon himself. If you want to know exactly what happened to him on his way to the cross, please read the last three chapters of all four Gospels. And then we will shed tears of gratitude for what our Lord has done for us by grace. We will now read a few more scriptures. Here you go, Brother Borg. We read from John 3, verse 16. John 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we can talk about love, but God has demonstrated His love by redeeming the lost creation, and that includes us by grace lifting us out of the fall into sin and making us again children of God by grace. We have received the adoption of sons. We are sons and daughters of God. Please take this to heart. For God so loved you and me, the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, 
who shed his blood for us. And brothers and sisters, first the blood was shed on the ground, but then the Lord entered with his own blood the Holy of Holies. To offer the blood that speaks for us on the mercy seat. Oh, how grateful we can be! Please believe that God has loved us so much, and we thank Him. The word we have read. Is also one of the most important, indeed, one of the most important scriptures we have in the New Testament. Here you go. We read from Second Corinthians five, verse nineteen. Second Corinthians five, verse nineteen. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto Himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Blessed and praised be our God. God was in Christ here on earth, and has accomplished the redemption here, and we may proclaim reconciliation, redemption. We have been called to proclaim the full gospel, the full salvation. The full redemption after spirit, soul, and body. Yes, thanks be to the Lord. Both scriptures belong to Isaiah 53. Blessed and praised be our Lord. Here you go. We read from Second Corinthians five. Verse twenty, Second Corinthians five, verse twenty. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Amen. This is also the divine commission in preaching today. Not only to speak of the end times, of the message that God has sent, but to place the core of the accomplished redemption at the center. And for this, we are grateful. That we may carry the divine message in a balanced way, and include everything that belongs to it in the proclamation: repentance, forgiveness, renewing, the new birth, being filled with the Holy Spirit. We may include everything in the proclamation, and we may experience everything by grace. Praise and glory be to our Lord. Here you go. We read from Romans eight, verse twenty-two. Romans eight, verse twenty-two. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain 
together until now. Thanks be to the Lord. The whole creation is waiting to be renewed, to be restored to its original state before the fall. Where the lion and the lamb will feed together, where there will be no more evil on earth. And we know that it is near. The end of time is very near. And all of creation is waiting. And we too are waiting to be taken from corruption into incorruption. Here you go. We read from Romans 8, verse 23. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. Amen. How marvelously the plan of salvation has been set forth to us in the Word of God. Not only the creation, but all believers are waiting to be taken out of this corruptible body. And this will happen at the return of Jesus Christ, which we can expect at any time. And since the Spirit of Christ has taken dwelling in us, the power of God will give life to our mortal bodies, just as our Savior came into a mortal body, and that this mortal body took on immortality, and our Lord was able to say, I was dead, but behold, I live forevermore. We too have received eternal life and will live forever. Praise be to our Lord for the accomplished redemption. Here you go. We read from Philippians 2, verse 8. Philippians 2, Verse 8. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. That's how it happened. Our Savior became obedient. We all know what happened to Adam. Adam no longer listened to the voice of God, but to the voice of Eve. But Eve had already listened to the voice of the enemy. And then came unbelief, disobedience, and the whole fall into sin. Our Savior was obedient, obedient unto the death on the cross. And His obedience has also come to us, to the redeemed. For everything that was in the Redeemer must and will be in the redeemed. 
Thus it is written of our Lord, I ascend to my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. The same Holy Spirit who came upon Mary and she conceived and gave birth to the Son of God is the same Holy Spirit who comes upon us and creates the new divine life in us. We are just so grateful from the bottom of our hearts. Here you go. We read from Ephesians 1, verse 7. Ephesians 1, verse 7. In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of His grace. Amen. Not only will have, but in Him we already have forgiveness, reconciliation, full salvation. And brothers and sisters, let me say it now. His resurrection is the guarantee of our resurrection. We have been crucified with Him. We died with Him. Through baptism, according to Romans 6, we were buried with Him into His death to walk with Him in a new life. These are divine facts that have been revealed in our lives, praised and glorified. Oh, the emphasis. In Him we have, not we will have, but in Him we have redemption, forgiveness, the blood was shed, and everything that God had, He has given us by grace in Jesus Christ. Blessed be His name. Here you go. I read from Mark 16, verse 6. And he says unto them, Be not afraid. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. Praise and thanks be to the Lord. Now we are at the resurrection of our beloved Lord and Savior. He is no longer here. The tomb is empty. He is risen. He is alive. Praise be to our Lord. As was foretold, and as our Lord also emphasized, on the third day, and everything happened, just as the Scriptures had said, every word of God has been fulfilled. In the last 24 hours, in connection with the crucifixion, 24 prophecies from the Old Testament came true, were fulfilled. Everything happened just as God had predicted through the prophets throughout the Old Testament. And our Lord is risen. He lives. Hallelujah. Here you go. We read 
from Hebrews 10, verse 12. Hebrews 10, verse 12. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Praise and thanks. The high priest had to enter the Holy of Holies every year with the blood of lambs. But our Redeemer entered the Holy of Holies once and for all with His precious and holy blood where the Ark of the Covenant and the altar of incense stand and has obtained an eternal redemption. Please take it to heart. Brothers and sisters, let there be no doubt. Let no unbelief arise. But believe once and for all that our Lord has truly entered the heavenly sanctuary and has accomplished an eternally valid redemption for you and for me, eternally valid, praised and glorified be our Lord. Believe it. Amen. Here you go. We read from Hebrews 10, verse 13. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. Thanks be to the Lord. As the victor of Calvary, he waits until his defeated enemies are made his footstool. And we all know that we have come so close, but so close to the return of the Lord. And we all know the Lord will finish his work of redemption with his own and all defeated enemies will be made his footstool and we will reign with Christ our Lord and Savior and King thanks be to the Lord do we have another scripture we read from Hebrews 10, verse 14. For by one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. Amen. Brothers and sisters, this is a very serious scripture. First, we heard that our Lord has accomplished an eternal redemption. But now, now, and I ask Brother Borg to read this verse again. Here you go. We read from Hebrews 10, verse 14. For by one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. So, those who allow themselves to be sanctified, he has perfected forever. Oh, thanks be to the Lord. Our Savior has given Himself completely and He wants us 
to give ourselves completely to Him too, and to be found in Him, in His Word, in His will, and to be sanctified in it. For the promise is given to those who are sanctified. They alone will reach the goal. No one will reach the goal on their own, but only those who are truly sanctified in the Word of Truth. And when will we be sanctified in it? By taking in the promises of the Word as divine substance. And believing from the heart, and having part in what God is presently doing, only in this way we can be sanctified in the will of God and in the Word of God, once and for all, and be perfected forever. And I believe this because it is written, and His bride. Has made herself ready. I believe that it is written, the Lord will come again, and those who have fallen asleep in Christ will rise again, and we will be changed and taken up together into glory. What seems impossible to us, God has made possible, and we believe it. And we will experience it all personally. Here you go. We read from Revelation 11, verse 15. Revelation 11, verse 15. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying. The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ, and He shall reign forever and ever. Praise and thanks be to the Lord. Brothers and sisters, we who have recognized the ministry of Brother Brenham and may say in faith he was the promised prophet who was to come before the great and terrible day of the Lord to turn the hearts of the children of God back to the faith of the fathers. We believe with all our heart. But he really emphasized one scripture very often, namely Revelation 10. And in Revelation 10, there is the promise that when the seventh angel blows the trumpet, then the whole mystery of God will be finished. And here we read that the Lord will then establish His kingdom. Then all enemies will be made His footstool. And brothers and sisters, Brother Brenham was the last church age messenger and brought us the last message to restore all things. And it is happening before our eyes. We thank the Lord for that. It is happening worldwide in all who belong to the Bride Church. But just imagine, in Revelation 10, the promise is given in the days when the seventh angel sounds, 
thick, had resounded their trumpet judgments over the earth. And now we come to Revelation chapter 11, where it is written of the temple that it will be measured of the ministry of the two witnesses who have done their ministry for three and a half years and the 144,000 from all 12 tribes of Israel have been sealed. And I tell you today, when the bowels of wrath will be poured out and all the judgments will have come upon the whole earth and brought about what would still be and should come after the rapture, then the word will be fulfilled that our Lord will take up the reign that he, no longer Satan, there is nothing more to be seen or heard of him. He has been cast down for the first thousand years and the entrance has been closed. Then there is no more Satan to be seen or heard, but our beloved Lord will reign. Read verse 17. We read from Revelation 11, verse 17. We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and wast, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We all know that our Lord will return as the bridegroom to take his bride to the marriage supper. But after the seven years, the reign of the king begins, and now we can be included. Lord, we thank you that you will begin your reign, that the enemy will no longer reign here and there. But we thank you, brothers and sisters, let us thank the Lord today that he will complete his work with his redeemed church that the rapture will take place, that everything will happen as it is written. And then, we thank you, Lord God Almighty, that you, that you have finally taken up your reign, and that we may rule and reign with you as kings and priests. It's all coming, and I tell you, it's just around the corner. The fulfillment of all these things has come so close that we can lift up our heads and thank the Lord already now. Do we still have a scripture? We read the last scripture from 1 Peter 4, verse 7. 1 Peter 4, verse 7. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Amen. Brothers and sisters, at that time Peter, inspired by the Holy Spirit, had to write for us who are living now he had to write, The end of all things is at hand. Become sober in prayer. Yes, sober in every way of life. 
O oh, brothers and sisters, there is nothing left for us but to give thanks to the Lord. We cannot go into detail about what is happening in our time. But when Peter wrote, the end of all things is at hand, then we can truly say, it is very near, because we see all of Bible prophecy being fulfilled before our eyes. Whether with Israel, and then we look to Moscow, let's look to Kiev, let's look here, let's look there, into the whole world. And as it is written, all nations will turn against Jerusalem. And we have now seen this in the Security Council. All nations have turned against Israel. And the scripture will be fulfilled. That everything will be fulfilled as it is written. Brothers and sisters, it is really on my heart to say to all true believers in all peoples, tongues and nations, we are living at the end of the end of the time of grace. And these are the last moments before the return of Jesus Christ. And we distinguish between what must happen before the rapture and what will happen in the seven years afterwards, whether with Israel or with the whole world. But we thank God for His precious and holy word. Here we have everything written down up to the new heaven and the new earth. And thanks be to the Lord. In the millennium, everything will still be on earth. Only the curse has been lifted for the moment. But people will continue to live. But after the thousand years, comes the new heaven and the new earth. Oh, thanks be to our God for the holy plan of redemption in which we have been included. God bless you all from Zurich. We especially wish all translators in all languages God's assistance, the guidance of the Holy Spirit to find the right words in every language to translate everything correctly. The Lord God is finishing His work. We say it again. The end of all things is at hand. Become sober, sober in your personal life, sober in your marriage, sober in church life, sober in every situation, normal, so that we can live a life pleasing to God. May the grace of God be with all who listen to the divine message. And as surely as the Lord came down in the supernatural cloud and commissioned Brother Brenham to bring the message before the second coming of Christ that would be spread throughout the world so it happened after he went home. He brought the message 
and then it was carried into all the world. We are also grateful for the transmissions. Personal missionary journeys are no longer necessary, no longer possible. But through the internet, we reach all peoples in all languages, and so may all who have found grace with God believe every word of God, be sanctified in the Word, and be perfected forever. Please. Read all these scriptures again. May the Lord God bless you. Yes, once again we greet all brothers and sisters in all peoples, tongues, and nations from Zurich, and we are convinced that the Lord will finish His work in our time. Hallowed be His name for all eternity. Glorified be His precious blood that flowed for us. Yes, we give thanks to God for the covenant He has made with us, for the blood He has shed for us, for all the promises He has made to us. He fulfills them all in our lives. Blessed and praised be His holy name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, come with me to Golgotha and see what happened for you. There on the cross, there he suffered pain and prayed for you, despised, mocked, and ridiculed by men. The Lord died for you. Come with me to Golgotha. The Savior and Redeemer of the world is bleeding there. And from this man, whom you so despised, the word resounds on the cross. It is finished. He did it for you. Oh, come with me to Golgotha. For there, heaven on earth is near you. Oh, look. Jesus took your sins upon Himself when He died in pain on the cross as Savior. He did that for you.